Welcome back to VBTeacher.com for Section 7 of the Breakout Project. In this part, we'll be adding some uh, restart capability to the program. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Hey, welcome back. Time to make some final touches to our Breakout Project and uh, call it a day. Uh, let's see where we left off. We'll run the project and see what we have. We have a, pro a form with a nice uh, game over and a, a scoring a scoring feature at the top. We have the red and white bricks in the middle and uh, what we'd like to have now is the ability to uh, first of all maybe make the game uh, start over which is not trivial. Maybe make it have some different sizes and finally make it increase slightly in difficulty as you get higher and higher scores. So those are the three objectives for this one. All right. First of all, let's get the, let's take a shot at making it restart. It's actually a little harder than you imagine, partly because we create all those bricks on the fly, and every time we restart, we either have to make sure that we don't recreate them or we have to clear them out and restart again. I think we'll do the latter. Uh, so our first task then is to um, is to look at the restart routine, and uh, the way we're going to do this is to keep that form really clean. Is we're going to make a right-click menu in the center here. And uh, the way we do that is with the aid of a special type of menu called a context menu. And a context menu uh, strip is a menu that pops up when you right click. So it's very simple. I uh, think we'll add in here restart. And uh, now when we click on the context menu and double click on restart, that's going to be our symbol to, uh, to start the game over again. Uh, but that's not as simple as it sounds. The routine that we use to start the game currently is called Make Bricks. But right now, every time we run Make Bricks, it makes another bunch of bricks for us, and so we'll have to revamp that just a little bit. So now down here, uh, we can copy the code that we use when we load the project, and then each time we restart, we can do the Make Bricks again, and that will work. So now when we right click it will attempt to do that. But now we have a little problem here and that problem is this that uh, we've got to clear out the bricks every time we restart. So um, <clears throat> this is not an easy loop to write because we're actually clearing elements out of a collection and each time you do that the collection gets smaller and if you do it the wrong way then you'll start getting errors because you'll go up and the numbers will be coming down and you'll run into some issues. Try it sometime. You'll see what I'm talking about. But we're going to count backwards and clear out all the bricks. So this will be clear out old bricks. And so for uh, my favorite variable i as an integer equals, now we start off with the uh, me.controls uh, me uh, and we have a collection of controls on the form and that's what you actually have to work with. Dot count minus one two zero step minus one so we'll start at the top and count down we hope this works correctly and then if um, me dot controls i uh, dot name equals brick then we're going to delete this one and so the way we do that is me dot controls dot remove at i and it will remove the brick number i and uh, then we should be able to uh, to get it to, to remove all the bricks we, we didn't use. Now there's a couple of other things we really should add here um, and that is is that we, we probably could set the size of the screen here and uh, and, and set up the, the cursor and the bat correctly so that it starts very cleanly and uh, we could do that very very easily by just uh, doing it in at the end of this but let's check let's check this out first and see if this seems to work so we're going to run a program our program comes up and we got to lose the program there we go now I, I forgot to do something the right click doesn't work I forgot there's one more step one more step in the use of the right click and that is on my form I have a property called context menu strip and I have to set that to the one I, I added. So now let's run it one more time. And now we'll, we'll lose, there we go, right click, restart. And it almost restarted. It, it redid the bricks, but it didn't set up the, uh, the timer correctly. And so that's, 
that's something else we'll have to take care of. Okay, so this time we have to recreate the, uh, we have to redo the start, um, <clears throat> have to redo the uh, ball. So we're going to set the ball up. And so let's position the ball. So uh, with ball, we can use it with command here. Um, we'll set the left to the middle of the screen. And the top to 90% um, of the screen. And we'll set the V speed to minus 3. And we'll set the H speed to, uh, to 1. So it'll move up uh, upwards and slightly to the right each time. And finally, we need to turn on the uh, timer 1. So timer 1 enabled equals true. And uh, that will probably give us the ability to restart gracefully. Let's try this out. Game over, restart, and there it goes. And so it's restarting on its own now. It's going a little faster this time because I must have set the, uh, the restart. I must have set the, the V speed a little faster than I did the first time. Now, it would be nice to have a, uh, a group of different sizes here, uh, different sizes of the games. And so I think we can do that fairly easily with in our, in our create bricks routine here. This clears out all the old bricks and uh, let's set up three different modes here. Uh, select case, uh, size mode. We don't have a size mode yet so let's make a, uh, a string here for that. Uh, dim my keyboard, my wireless keyboard goes crazy sometimes here so let me see if I can get rid of that problem. Dim size mode as string equals small. We'll have small, medium, and large. And uh, now down here on the um, size mode we'll have case case small case medium case large and uh, when we have it small we're going to set the size of the screen and so we'll say me dot width equals okay let's make it small so 400 500 400 me height equals um, 300 okay and uh, then we'll set the rows and the columns rows equals um, 8 calls equals 10. And we'll copy those four lines again for each of the other two modes and make them a little bigger. So we'll go 400, 600, and 800 for the width and the height uh, 300, 450, and 600 roughly the same aspect ratio. And then the columns and rows, we'll have a few more rows here. Let's do um, 9, let's, let's do 10 and 12. And down here let's do um, 12 and 14. Okay, so now we have three modes of the program and we can actually just change this at the beginning. We have it set to small. We could set it to medium and see what it looks like. And then down below here then we use the variables rows and columns which um, we initially set up up here which we won't be using now. So this time it's going to run the small mode and it's going to allow us to restart. And in a minute we'll add the ability to change the size of the screen. So here we go starts off. That's kind of short and fat here, but that's all right. Uh, go, 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 go. It's working just fine. Okay. Now we're going to change, uh, just as a quick test, we're going to change the size up here at the top and just change it to medium and see what that looks like. And that is bigger. It has a few more rows and a few more columns. And there we go. Finally, 
Uh, that's the large should work. You know, let's run the large. That's big. It's really big. It's a little bit off the screen here for you. You can't really watch us very well. It made it bigger than my uh, selection area for running this program. And there it goes again. So we're running the uh, thing off the edge of the screen. Let me move it up a little bit so you can see it. Restart one more time. There it goes. And we're off and running. So you can kind of see it running here for it. And so we have a small, a medium, and a large. And it runs well on each one. Now the way we're going to modify this though is to go back to our form and click on the context menu and we're going to add um, a, an underscore or dash and that will create a line here and then we're going to do a, a large, uh, a small, medium and large here. Okay, And so now on each of these we can uh, we can tell it to, uh, this is small tool strip menu item click, and we can have all three of them come here. Medium, tool strip menu item click. I'm going to make all three of them come to the same place. Large, tool strip menu item click. So all three of these come to the same place. And uh, then inside this place, we have, uh, we're going to take the name of the sender. So um, we're going to set size mode equals sender dot text. And that should give it to us. And we're going to force it to restart and so make bricks. OK, so let's try this. We'll run it this time. And it's set on large mode. This time we can actually, we can actually go in and right click and say, let's do the small mode. And it still stayed on the large. Whoops, didn't quite work. Hmm. OK, restart. Stayed on the large mode. Okay. I think I must have left out something. Let's see if I did. I size mode is here, and that's size mode as string equals large. And when I run size mode, let's see why it doesn't change. Let's see if it goes to the right place here. I'm going to use a break here, and when it gets to this line, we're going to watch it. And so this time, the first time through, size mode is large, run. And so it stops, and we're dead. OK, so restart. Small. This time, size mode is set at bigger, uppercase, small. And there's our problem. And uh, let's just, we'll fix it right here. We don't have to, uh, I had a, a capitalized letter on the menu, and I didn't have it here. So let's do a select case size mode to lower. And that will guarantee that when it runs it, it's uh, lowercase characters like I have all these set at. And let's try it one more time. All right, we lost. Now we'll go to small mode. There we go. We're back in small mode. We can adjust those to be whatever size we want. And finally, uh, let's put in a little difficulty change. This is actually really easy to do. Uh, whenever we add to the score, whenever we hit a brick, we get a we get to see the score. And um, check brick, there it is. There's where we change the score. So anytime that uh, we come through here, we can reset the vertical speed. The vert vertical speed never changes. Uh, it can go from uh, uh, whatever it is. Um, if score is greater than 30, that'll be our cutoff for more difficulty, then uh, else, okay. Uh, v if v speed is less than zero, then v speed equals three. If v speed is greater than zero, then v speed equals three. Make that negative three. Let's copy those two lines up here. And do them right here also. This time, though, if it's greater than 30, we're going to make it 6. So when we hit 30 points, it's going to double the speed. Whichever way the speed is, it's going to look at it as I hit a brick, and it's going to speed it up. So here we go. Got to watch that score this time. We're going to look for it to, uh, let's, let's lose and get it off to medium size so you can watch.
All right, one more time, restart. Okay, here we go. Running, running, running. Got to get to 30 points, and then we'll watch the uh, watch the fun begin. We're going to have to really move quickly after it gets to 30 points. There's 21, 27. Now it's moving. Watch it when it gets a little sideways. Whoops. And so restart, and it goes back to slower speed. Whoops, looks like it went fast again. Anyway, we'll have to play around with that a little bit, but you got the idea. Hey, it's been fun. Um, I'm going to call this game done. Uh, we've got a number of options here. We can restart and play and play and play with our game now. And it uh, looks like our score didn't res reset correctly. There's a few features that you can clean up here, but I think by now you've gotten the idea of how to, how to start to do a, a breakout game and uh, have a great deal of fun with this and keep playing with it and, and uh, make, this thing, make this thing your own. Give it some more features. Make, make it so that you can change your colors or have the customized rows and columns or have, it, uh, have some sound effects. Uh, good luck with that. Thank you for programming along with us, and we'll see you down the road on the next game project. So so long from vbteacher.com